When it comes to the railway, the big components such as ballast, sleepers and rails get a lot of attention, but there are some smaller components that are the unsung heroes of the track system. Do you know which ones I'm talking about? It's clips, base plates and pads. These smaller components are critical to the modern railway track system performing properly. In fact, when it comes down to maintenance, it can be these that are the root cause of an issue. So, if you're not familiar, let's have a quick look at where they can be found. They are all involved in securing the rail to the sleeper and keeping it there. The base plate is secured to the sleeper, normally with screws. A pad is laid on the base plate before the rail. The clips are then used to secure the rail in place. Specifically how depends on their design. So now we know where these components can be found on track, let's look at them in a bit more detail. Base plates. As you would expect, there is a number of different designs of base plates, with the design evolving over the years, especially as new rail stations have been introduced. The biggest difference you are likely to see is between those on wooden sleepers and those on concrete sleepers. The function of the base plate also varies slightly between the two sleeper material types. On a wooden sleeper, the base plate is essential to ensuring the load from the rails is distributed across a wide area. This avoids damage, known as indentation, to the top of the sleeper. Indentation will happen over time, as the wood ages and degrades, but it would be more severe if this load was more concentrated. This requirement drives the size of the base plate, with the base plate wanting to have the largest surface area, but also avoiding being too close to the sleeper edge. The base plate is also the place where inclination of the rail, if required, is applied. It is done by applying the angle at the area where the rail is seated at the base plate. Ensuring the base plate is firmly secured to the rail is critical, as this is how the gauge or distance between the rails is maintained. Base plates are secured to wooden sleepers in two main ways. The first and most common within Europe is with chair screws. The sleeper is drilled to match the base plate and then screws are put in. It is also normal that you would see what is known as a ferrule. These plastic inserts reduce vibration, provide electrical insulation between the base plate and screw, while also giving a surface for the screw thread to bite into. The other main way of securing the base plate to wooden sleepers is with a spike type fitting. These are hammered through a hole in the base plate directly into the sleeper. They frequently also secure the rail as well. There are a number of types, from simple spikes to elastic type spikes, where the metal has been folded over, as you can see from the picture. This aids with preventing the spike loosening. While these can easily be fitted with a hammer and only need one component to secure both the rail and the base plate, the drawbacks are that with one component failure, all security of the rail and base plate to the sleeper is lost. When it comes to concrete sleepers, things are a little different. While base plates can be screwed into sleepers with the aid of pre-drilled or cast in holes, it's much more common for the base plate or housing to be directly cast into the sleeper. This has the advantage of strength but does mean that if there are any issues with the housing, the whole sleeper needs to be changed. This is not a small task when a single concrete sleeper weighs around 250 kilos. On concrete sleepers, given the way they are manufactured, it is possible to include the inclination in the sleeper design, rather than, re rather than relying on the base plate to introduce it. Pads are the unsung component in the track setup. Often forgotten about, for a simple piece of rubber, they offer so much. A cushion vertical and impact loading, they are a conforming layer that ensures even pressure and support between the rail and the base plate. They also reduce the transmission of vibration due to their elastic nature. They resist lateral movement along the rail length from thermal forces or from train acceleration and braking. They also provide an insulating layer between the rail and the base plate, an important function in areas with track circuit signalling. This is a lot for a simple component. Given these functions, as well as the range of conditions it will be used in, from hot summers to cold winters, the choice of material is important. Natural or synthetic rubber as well as EVA or HDPE plastics are common choices, giving a long life to the pads. Fastenings. Commonly called clips, at least in the UK, their official title is fastenings. The fundamental job of fastenings is to provide a connection between the rail and the base plate sleeper, depending on the design. In addition to this, they also have to provide the following which are similar to that of pads, but with a few additions. They provide vertical support during the load and unload cycle of a train passing over them. They provide lateral support. They need to hold the rails to gauge, resist horizontal forces generated by trains or thermal forces. They also need to resist longitudinal movement from train braking and acceleration or temperature changes. This is all achieved by what is known as tow load. Tow load is the downward force applied to the foot of the rail by the fastening. 
They also need to be electrically insulated to avoid affecting track circuit signaling systems. So those are all similar to pads, but clips also should be universal, so they can be used in as many track types as possible, such as both plain line and SNC. They should be easy to remove and install, given that this will be critical to a number of maintenance activities, such as rail changes. Talking of maintenance, they should also be virtually maintenance free. Any removal and refit should also not downgrade their performance. Economy. Let's face it, there are going to be a lot of clips on the railway, so they need to do all of this at a modest price. As with everything on the railway, the design has evolved and the common fastenings can be grouped into three general types. These are spike type fastenings, we touched on these earlier when we were talking about base plates, bolted or threaded fastenings, and lastly, spring type clips. Spike fastenings do as they are named. They are directly driven into the sleeper next to the rail through a hole in the base plate if used. A bent over part of the spike holds down the rail foot. Some common types include simple rail spike, elasticated spike, or Macbeth spikes. The elasticated spikes exert a higher toe load than the standard spike. While simple and cheap, these fastenings are very susceptible to vibration. It is also almost impossible to ensure uniform toe load onto the foot of the rail. This makes them unsuitable for use in stressed track, as well as prone to failure. The next iteration of fastening design was driven by the introduction of concrete sleepers. Hammering a spike into a concrete sleeper is not an option. However, the casting of the sleeper did open up the opportunity to incorporate some fastening into the sleeper itself. A plate or fixed element is bolted to the cast-in threaded bar with a nut and washer. Tightening in the nut allows tow load to be exerted, and by specifying the torque value, consistent load can be achieved. While an improvement over spike type fastenings, these fastenings do have some drawbacks. Chief among these is the reliance on the nut to facilitate the application of the tow load. It is also not unusual for vibrations to loosen these nuts, leading to a loss of tow load. Lastly, spring type fastenings. Building on the previous fastening type, spring clips use holes or a slot in the base plate to restrain at one end, while the other end sits on the foot of the rail. When inserted with the rail in place, the clip exerts a designed level of force onto the rail. This type of fastening lends itself perfectly to having the housing with the required hole or slot cast directly into the sleeper without having a hole in the concrete that would allow water access. They are also a single component which reduces cost and makes maintenance a lot easier. The single component design also allows a very consistent tow load and performance of the fastening, exactly what is required for stress track. There are new designs of fastening, particularly those for use in SNC and high speed track, which move back towards having a screw element in them. They include a spring type component secured down with a screw. So there we have three of the lesser well known but equally important track components you'll find on the railway. I hope you found this video interesting. Pop over to the channel for more railway content. Hit that subscribe button to never miss a video. And drop a comment with any questions you do have. Thank you.